In the early stages of moving into the Champaign community, I was looking for a place to live and work. I started my ministry and food initiatives because what I was finding as I researched all the local organizations and not-for-profits that were helping people in poverty like me is that none of them really knew how to deal with someone like me. Most of them were dealing with people who had been impoverished all their lives, not people who are displaced executives like me who literally ran a business, who had a life, who had a wife, who had a child, and literally did that for a long while. I ran a business for 15 plus years. I had no problems financially. Is not really true, but we lived frugally and we knew what to do and how to spend in a safe environment where we lived. What I'm talking about though is that that gentleman wanted to make deals with me all the time about things that I found on the Lord's path for me. Some things I pulled that I didn't need for me and I started to realize that I could just start asking God whether or not it was something that was to be pulled for me or not pulled for me, whether it was placed there for me or not placed there for me. And when I did that, I realized there was less for me to pull. It was also more marvelous because I was led directly to a cell phone and directly in a different space to the cord that would fit it and directly and so on and so forth and in a most amazing and miraculous and magical way of the Lord. But what I'm talking about is people who don't have any God within them. And when they don't have God within them, they practice their faith of jealousy, of abuse, of harassment, of mutilation, and of, well, molestation. I can recall waking up several times and finding cell phones that were very securely in a pair of very well-locked cargo pants outside of my pants pockets. I also have found that many type of electrical things have gone missing from my pockets and missing from my bags, and if I mention that, then I might get them back. My great mirror went and came several times, and other things like that were marvelous to me. My spoons and other things have been stolen from me and brought back because people may be listening online to me. But what I don't like is the man who's been ill-willed and molesting and really mutilating my face and cutting my beard in the night. In the cell phone that was pilfered from me, I had a huge rage talking about my anger that someone would cut my religious beard because we don't take a Jewish priest and cut his beard. We don't take a black African minister and cut his beard. We do not take a pagan priest today and cut their beard and yet a marvelous man who just thought he'd take me to hand thought he'd cut my beard without my consent. The only time I've ever cut my beard in the last almost two years was to take out the knots that ill-willed sheriff and ill-willed people like that maintenance man who tied my beard in a knot while I slept and didn't think one of my friends saw him do it. But how do you prove it? That's what people say. But I swear to God, if we had a police officer today that did their job, that did their investigative reporting, and actually did what they're supposed to do, which is kept to catch molesters like this, sexual predators like this, because I've had other parts of my body shaved, which means the molesters have not stopped. And here's the sad rub that most of the people who communicate to me what they see about what's going on around me at night know the company, know the employees, and know they're not doing their jobs when they're attacking me.